So, I'm Paul from DIY Automate. We're in the middle of a beginner series, or the beginning of a beginner series, for Home Assistant. Last time we covered the configuration.yaml file, this time we're doing components. So, we can control things, and that's goodness. So, let's go do that. Okay, so last time, many, many moons ago, um, we went over actually a couple of videos, right? One was how to use Notepad++ to connect to um, your Raspberry Pi and Home Assistant. And then the other one was just a general overview of configuration.yaml. And if you were following along with that, you should be able to now go ahead and open up your, um, your Raspberry Pi and your Home Assistant configuration within Notepad++. And that's where we're going to start. Um, I, one thing I will say here is, if you haven't done it, or if you haven't done it in a while, um, go ahead and run um, an update and upgrade, and maybe even upgrade uh, Home Assistant as well. And I'll put links uh, in the video so that you can easily do that. But we've done most of that before. Okay, so uh, let's go look at configuration.yaml really quickly again. Uh, just go into your uh, Notepad++ and open up your configuration.yaml. And if it is still at the beginning of how it was installed, uh, very few changes here, this is what your configuration.yaml will look like. Uh, so a couple things. One is that each of these sections are called components. And components can just do a few different things, right? So components are either configuration of uh, add-ons to Home Assistant that control things like Hue Lights, Sonos, um, you know, whatever device or IoT type device you have to install. It can do things like go and gather information from services like Weather Underground, which is what we're going to do today, or a bunch of other services. Uh, it can basically do anything in the back end. There's, there's uh, Python scripts that, that others have written that are plugins to Home Assistant, and the way that those are controlled are through components within configuration.yaml. Fair enough. So the other, there's a couple other things, right? So Home Assistant itself is is controlled through components within configuration.yaml. So Home Assistant, you can see, is the only actual component that you have to have in order to make all this work. And that's sort of there by default. You can see I, I've already named mine Loft instead of Home Assistant um, or Home. Uh, and you can go ahead and do that. And I think we did that in the last video. You can see the different latitudes and longitudes. And that's how Home Assistant knows where you are to get different data and, and things like that. So um, if you haven't, go ahead and, and, and configure that. Put in your, your uh, values. If you need help, go back to um, the beginner Home Assistant beginner number one video, and that'll walk you through that. Um, things like introduction, we'll go through that. But that is, is actually one of the tiles on the Home Assistant homepage. Um, you know, enable the front end, set a password, which we'll do today, uh, check for updates every time you log on. Those are all different components within configuration.yaml, within Home Assistant, that controls what Home Assistant's doing when you start it up and when you interact with it. So that's all well and good, but these, these default uh, components really don't give us much. Right. What we really want to do here is we want to be able to um, control the things we want to control. And we can go and write all kinds of components to do that on our own. And maybe eventually we'll get there in, in these videos. But really, most of the stuff that we want to do, somebody has already done for us. And that's very nice of them. So let's, uh, let's go look at that. So in order to get to that, you can, um, well, you can go to your Home Assistant uh, your Home Assistant installation. And remember I said that that introduction is uh, one of the panels, right? And this is the welcome home. That's this introduction within the, within the configuration.yaml. Um, so we're going to, whoops, we are going to go ahead and uh, play with that. Um, but for now, let's go and see, do you see available components? Let's go there, it'll take us to the Home Assistant website and it'll show us there's already over 600 different components that you can choose from. 
depending on what you have. Everything from IFTT, which is a cloud service, um, if this, then that. So if one thing happens, do another. It's a good way to sort of extend Home Assistant to things that aren't already here. Um, Amazon Echo, which is very popular, a lot of people use it. Um, today, we're gonna be looking at three different things or three different components to sort of get us up and running on, on how these look and how to interact with them. Um, the next time we'll look at how to sort of make them look nice within the interface using groups and views, and we'll move on from there. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go look at the Sonos um, component, right? So Sonos, and you can see, well, here, let me go back there. You can see Sonos is actually a media player, right? There's plenty of media players. Sonos is just one of them. So actually the component is media player. Right? And one of the types of that component is Sonos. And you'll see that when we go in here, see media player is really the component. And then the platform within that is Sonos. And there's a bunch of different, you know, player FM and whatever media players, um, you know, that could be there. So um, for us, and, and the other thing I want to say is that there's many different ways to, to interact with components, right? So when you go to this web page, it's going to give you a bunch of different examples on how to um, how to configure the specific component within your configuration.yaml. Um, usually the first one is the most basic configuration and if you just do that you'll get Sonos and that's fine. Um, others you know you'll see other you want to discover a specific interface which will maybe your controller um, or do you want to add all of your different um, hosts all of your different Sonos players. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add all of our different Sonos players. So in order to do that, it's very simple. You just go ahead and you copy the component type that you would like out of this, right? And go back to your configuration.yaml and make sure there's no other media player here or else you'll fail, right? Or it will fail, you won't be a failure. Um, and just go ahead and type that in. now. There are obviously some configuration things that, that will need to be done, right? 192.0.2.25 is not my Sonos hosts. Um, so you have to actually put your own Sonos hosts in there. And I actually have mine already over here. I'm gonna go grab them really quick uh, and you'll be able, be able to use those. All right. So those are mine. Um, yours obviously again will be different but the platform is Sonos and then the host. Now you may have another platform and the way that the markup works for YAML, YAML actually stands for YAML ain't a markup language. And other people say it's yet another markup language because it truly is markup, right? It's a way of defining how we, um, defining text so that it can control something, right? So it's very, a, a definitive way of writing things. So here you have sort of the top level, which is the component name you have, um, you have a platform and this little tick mark right here means it's part of a list, right? So if we were gonna do another platform, we put that little tick mark space or the dash space platform and then the next platform name and then whatever configuration goes under that. Um, and then, you know, whatever configuration needs to happen under that and different uh, components will have different configuration uh, setups. So with that, you're gonna see, there's a couple things we wanna do. So first thing we wanna do is save that, right? And then, we can actually go into, if you go into your Raspberry Pi, you can run this has dash dash script space check config. And there's a couple of ways to do that. You can do this from the interface. Uh, it's a newly added part of the interface. I don't think it's quite there yet. They're working on it. They're doing a good job. Um, they're just not there, there yet. So I think this is the easiest way. So from within your Raspberry Pi, run this command and you'll see that it'll go It'll take it a second. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna read your configuration.yaml. It's gonna look and you can see, you know, all of the different um, different components that we have here, front end, sensor, conversation, and we just added media player. So media player shows up and they're all green. So we're good to go. If there were errors, you would see some red text in there trying to tell you what the error is. Okay, so once we do that, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and um, restart the service. So if you've, set up your uh, your Raspberry Pi and your Home Assistant uh, installation the way that I have. This is the way you'll restart your service. If you've done it differently, it may be slightly different, especially the service name, but uh, this is pretty common, right? So sudo system control, um, it's actually gonna restart has service. I don't know why that says enable. 
restart has service. It's going to go. It's going to take it a second. It's going to go ahead and restart it. Um, and restart typically takes a minute or two, um, but it's not a big deal. And then the next thing we're going to do is go over, go back into our uh, our home assistant, right? So right here, and then we can refresh the page. And if all is well, and sometimes it takes a minute, but all is well here, you can see here's all the different Sono speakers, right? So they're all, um, most of my speakers right now are playing Bob Dylan. One of the great things about this is now this gives you an interface, right, to control these things. So already because of the way that the component is, the component understands Sonos, right? So you can do things like start the music playing, right? You can skip to the next song. Um, you can... Uh, do things like control the sound, right? So th there's a bunch of or volume. Sorry, you can skip to the next thing, next song. Um, there's a bunch of different things, and depending on your Sonos setup, I don't have a Sonos that can actually take sources, right? Um, oh, so th this is the my actual my um, playlist, my Sonos playlist, not like Google Plus playlist, but the actual ones that are in Sonos itself. Um, so there you go. So that's that's how easy it is to add a component. So we're gonna add a couple of more and um, some that are a little bit more complex than others. So for me, uh, after Sonos, the thing that I would set up would be my, um, would be my uh, Philips Hue lighting, right? So again, what we can do is we can go back to the Home Assistant page, right? Back to the components. And this time I'm gonna type in Hue. Oops and go into Philips Hue. And you're gonna see again, here's a different, here's some configuration. Here's the different types of things that you can put in here. Mostly, we just need the default uh, configuration. But if, if you had some things you wanted to do, you could actually set some options in there just by adding that under light and giving it a true false um, or, or whatever. So um, we're gonna go ahead and copy this out. Uh, and we're going to put that into our configuration.yaml again. And again, make sure there's no not already a light there. And you notice I went all the way back to the side here, right? And in YAML, because it's a markup, right, you have to be very specific. Every, um, every indentation is two spaces. And you can set up Notepad++ that if you hit tab, it does two spaces instead of a tab mark. That's what I've done here. Um, maybe I'll go through that in another, another video. But you, you can go through that and just search it. It's, it's a fairly common thing to do. Um, so Philips Hue is the platform. If we had other lights, we'd have to, again, do it like this, right, and, and make a list. The host IP address, I forget what my IP address is, but luckily I have it over here. Um, 192.167.040. Uh, we're going to add that and paste it in here. And you can see how simple this is to add different components. We're going to go ahead and save. Um, and then we're going to go back to our handy dandy console. We are going to check the script. And on this one, I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Some of the ones that are a little bit more complicated, um, you know, you want to, uh, you want to get in the habit of doing this because the ones that are more complicated, you're more likely to make mistakes on. And if you make a mistake and the mistakes, um, in a, if, if the mistake is a specific type of mistake, um, your actual uh, home assistant won't come back up when we restart the service and you're gonna to have to figure it out on your own what's wrong so this is an easier way to do that before it before you actually reboot the service validate your your script and and uh, make sure everything's okay um, and as we go along there's more configuration files that we're going to use and um, and this check config will actually read through all of those configuration files and make sure there's nothing wrong in any of them so that's great so then we're going to go ahead and we're going to restart the service it'll take it a second great that's restarted um, it'll take it a minute for everything to restart back up in the web page, but we'll do that. We'll come back here, go in the Home Assistant, reload, and we should see, whoops, it's just taking it a minute to come all the way back up. I was just too fast for it. Um, it'll take it a minute sometimes to read all the new stuff in, um, which is perfectly fine. Uh, we just need to wait for that to happen. So I'm going to reload it one more time. Um, and see what happens. Okay, and that didn't come up, so we're gonna go and do a little bit of troubleshooting, and I think that's kind of some of the point of, of these videos. So let's go back to our configuration.yaml um, and take a look at what's going on here. 
Um, and I see right away, I just didn't copy the one over, so I didn't put my whole address in there. And you'll see in that case, right? So Home Assistant came all the way back up because there was no error as far as Home Assistant's concerned, right? The, the actual platform is set up fine. It's just looking for a device on 92 instead of 192, 167, 040. So it couldn't find it, but there was no real error to speak of. It just didn't find the device. Um, so now that that's there, we're gonna save it. We'll go through just to be in the habit of it, of running our check again. And it should be fine again because we haven't really changed anything. Uh, and then we'll restart the service again for it to read back in the configuration.yaml. And then we will come here and it still might take it a minute, but we'll restart here. Ah, and you can see there's Philips Hue, right? So we need to configure Philips Hue. And one of the things that we need to do is actually hit the configure. It's gonna tell us to go press the button and then come back here and say, I have pressed the button. So I'm gonna do that, I'll be right back. So I pressed the button. Now I have 30 seconds from the time I press that button to press this button, right? And this will pair them. It'll give, um, it'll give us a, uh, a password between our home assistant and our Philips Hue. We'll, we'll get a password within it internally. And you don't need to keep track of that. It's in a file somewhere, um, but you don't need to keep track of that. It'll do it for you. And you can see now we have control interfaces for th other lights, right? So we can come in and, um, and you can see my office won't go on because the switch is off. Uh, let me go turn on that switch. Okay, so I turned on the wall switch, so there's power to the actual light, and now you'll be able to see, we can control it from here, and we can actually come in and do things like control the color, All right, turn it to white, turn it to yellow, color, co color temperature, change some effects on it, random color loops, things like that. Um, and if you have Philips bulbs, go ahead and play with all that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not gonna go ahead and do that here. Um, we can go ahead and shut off that light again, and we're uh, we're good to go. So now we have um, we have music, right? We have lights, and I think we'll do one more slightly more complicated um, component, right? So let's do the weather underground component, and there's a reason I want to do this because it's a sensor, and there's already a sensor within the um, default configuration.yaml file. So this will show you how to sort of add things under different different sensors and things like that. So let's go back to components and we will go to weather underground. Um, actually here, let's go to weather down here, probably the quickest way to find it, weather underground. And you'll see this is a much larger component. All of these different um, conditions to monitor you're, you need an API key, um, you need, you know, your platform is weather underground and it is a sensor, right? Um, so what it's saying is you can cont you can um, get your API key by going to weather underground. Um, it'll just take it a second and sign up for an API key. So this is the API home, sign in, create an account for weather underground. Um, and just, it's a fairly easy process. I'm not gonna walk you through that, but on the Weather Underground site, it's a fairly easy easy thing to do. All right, so I already have a, a key. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy, just like before, we're gonna copy out this whole component. And we are going to add it to our configuration.yaml. Um, and then I'll show you. So you see it, it created a sensor and when it copied it in, it didn't copy it right against the, the side, the le it's not less left justified. So you have to go and fix that. That's pretty common. And then you see we have a sensor here, platform.yr. And what that platform.yr is, is this YR symbol right here. It's telling me my weather today from, I forget, like the Netherlands or something like that. So um, not one that I find terribly useful, but it's there as sort of a default. Um, so we're gonna leave that just to show you how to combine these and then we'll delete it out at the end. So right now we have sensor platform YR. We're gonna just copy platform YR, right? And we're gonna come here, we're gonna two spaces for an indent, dash space platform.yr, whoops. And make sure that it all, you don't get any extra spaces in there or it won't work. And then 
Um, I'm actually going to leave this sensor here right now so that I can show you what an error would look like. Um, but normally, and we'll come back and we'll, we'll get rid of that. So let's save this. And then we're going to go back into our console. And we are going to check our config. It's going to take a second. And you're going to see, uh, yep, see duplicate keys sensor. Right, and it tries to give you a, an estimation of where it is. So line 43 and line 60. If you come here, um, line 60 is here, line 43 is there. Right, so in here, it's line 43 and line 60. Um, and then in here, it's line 43 and line 60. Um, so, so there we go with that. So there's a couple ways we can, we can do that. We can just delete it out or we can comment it out. Um, whichever one you want to do, um, or you can, you know, decide you don't need the, the duplicate platforms and, and just delete the entire platform of the one you want. But once we do that, you can see we've, we've commented that out. It no longer applies. We come here, we check the script and give it a second and we're all green again. We're going to restart our service and that should just take a second and then we'll come back here. Oh, one more thing we have to do. Sorry, before we go back there, your API key, you actually need that API key and you need to add it to the component, right? So again, did you see there was no actual error within Home Assistant, right? It's all green because as far as Home Assistant is concerned, all your text is right. It doesn't know what your API key is. It doesn't care. So it doesn't actually validate that that key is correct, right? As far as it's concerned, your API key could be a valid API key, right? But that's not what ours is. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an API key from over here. And um, I have mine in a secrets file so that you can't get it and use it. Um, most of you wouldn't, but hey, um, a couple of you might. So, um, and I'll show you how to create a secrets file in another video so that you can sort of do that, right? So I have another file somewhere where that API key is stored and, um, and uh, um, Home Assistant will just go out and grab that out of the secret file. Um, if you're curious before that, just go to the components page and look for secret um, or do a search within Home Assistant. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and save again. And we're going to check the config. And then we are going to restart. And everything's good. Now we'll go back to our web page. And you can see all of these showed up, right? So it actually refreshed itself. But all of these here are weather underground uh, weather formats, right? So Fahrenheit temperature where I am right now is 52 degrees. Um, you can, you know, you could go through these and figure out what's the heat index right now. Um, you know, is it calm? The wind is calm. Um, there's a bunch of things that you can go millibar pressure. Um, a ton and the way that we can control this because that's pretty ugly right eventually I'll show you how to change maybe three or four videos from now I'm going to show you how to change all of the text under here so that it's more human readable and not just what um, home assistant decides to give you but for now let's go back in and decide what we want so I live in the US we do Fahrenheit so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete out all of the Celsius uh, things here, and I'm actually gonna take out the strings too. I don't care about the words, I just want the, the actual um, Fahrenheit uh, numbers. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of a lot of this stuff that I just don't care about. You can get rid of whatever you want. You can keep just two or three of these. Um, participation, uh, precipitation in inches, that's great. I don't care about metric or string. Um, I honestly don't care about pressure, pressure trends. I'll keep the relative humidity. Um, solar radiation, I don't care about right now. Station ID, I don't care about. And you can pick, again, whichever ones you want. Temperature in Fahrenheit, I will um, leave. Um, UV, I don't care about. So I'm just going to delete the rest of these. Well, I'll leave wind miles per hour. Um, just so you can... We'll just get rid of this bottom stuff just to make it neat. Okay, so you can see I deleted out a lot of those, right? So we're going to go ahead and save. And then just to be in the habit of good, good work practices, we will go and we will check the config. Give it a second. 
Great, we'll restart the service. Give it a second. And we will come back here. Oops. And we will reload the page. You can see now it's many less um, items. And, and that's how you configure components. Right, so fairly straightforward, fairly easy. Most of it is copy and paste and taking a minute to look at the, you know, the component web page and make sure that you understand it. Um, and then validating your configuration before you go really makes things easier. Um, so that's, that's it. I think the next video is gonna be about groups and views and how to take everything on this page that we have here and um, make it look better and more organized so it's easier for us to use. So that'll be the next thing that we that we do. And we'll just take this from where we are now with these three components and sort of walk through doing a few other things. Okay. So until then, keep automating. If you have questions, email me, put them in the comments. I will do my best. I don't hit them all, but I think I try to do a good job of getting to them. Um, and if you know a better way of doing it or a different way, feel free to either email me or, you know, share in the comments for other people. That'd be great. Um, until then, have a good time automating and I will talk to you again. Bye.